You're listening to More Than a Song, episode 153. Welcome to this episode of More Than a Song. My name is Michelle Nizat, and this is the podcast dedicated to helping you discover the truth of Scripture hidden in today's popular Christian music. My goal is to teach you to connect portions of God's Word with the songs you're singing along with on the radio, to help you meditate on truths that will transform your way of thinking and ultimately your life. So last week we focused in on the throne of God and the king who sits upon it. And this week we keep our eyes squarely fixed on the king, inspired by the song by Natalie Grant titled King of the World. I can't wait to jump into scripture, but first, let's listen. When did I forget that you've always been the king of the world? I try to take a life back. Out of the hands of the king of the world How could I make you so small When you're the one who holds it all When did I forget that you've always been the king of the world The title King of the World drew me back to Psalm 47. Now, I used that psalm just a couple of months ago in episode 144. And if you accepted the challenge of that episode, then you wrote out the entire psalm verse by verse. Now, this week, we will use the Bible interaction tool exercise of making a list. I share my personal Bible interaction tool exercises with you each week. I call them bites for short. In fact, I use them every week in preparation to share with you. They're often pretty conventional ways to study anything, really. I mean, I obviously did not discover the study exercise of making a list. But I think sometimes we approach the Bible the same way all of the time and wonder why we continue to get similar results. So if you haven't taken me up on it yet, I challenge you to try a bite or two. So I'm going to take three different approaches to making a list this week. All of them, not so you can get really good at using that bite, but so that you can get really clear on how amazing the king of the world really is. Now, I'm hoping these lists will turn into praise for the king of the world this week. So let's start in Psalm 47. Why? Well, because our song calls God the king of the world, and Psalm 47, 2 says, For the Lord Most High is awesome. He is the great king of all the earth. So our song asks the question, When did I forget that you've always been the king of the world? I tend to forget what I don't remind myself of. So have you ever been challenged to say something nice about the person on your left in like a team building exercise or something? Or maybe even list out the characteristics of your spouse that you love? Um, When we don't put things into words and verbalize them regularly, we lose clarity. And when we lose clarity about the greatness of God, we focus on on what seems to be the clearest, which in my case tends to be my problems. So I I find I never have trouble putting my problems into words. (laughs) How about you? I mean, I I repeat them. um, I make lists of them in my mind. I bemoan my situation. And in fact, I just tend to magnify my problems and concerns over or greater, make them greater than the sovereignty and greatness of God. So today, let's make lists magnifying the king of the world and see if we can turn that on its head. So our lyrics give us a few characteristics of God, and you could track those down in scripture. That would be a great exercise and just read them in context on your own. So for example, one of the lyrics in the song says, the whisper of your voice tames the seas. And I'm thinking of the story of Jesus rebuking the winds uh, um, when he and the disciples were in a great storm on a on a lake, and uh, that's found in the gospel. So you could go explore that story. Um, one of the the lyric says, you're the one who made me from dust. So you can definitely head over to the beginning in Genesis to read about that and read about that in context. Um, the, the lyric that says, you're the one who holds it all. 
Uh, Colossians 1.17 says, And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And so you could go study in the book of Colossians this week. Again, you see what I'm saying as far as the lyrics have given us kind of a list of things, and we could go all over scripture and just really explore those things or go in one place and sit for a while. And so it's all, all these amazing truths um, are, are found in God's word, but we are going to go back to that psalm and sit for a little while and make a list from one psalm, reading it in context. And if you're a longtime listener, you know that reading in context is my favorite Bible interaction tool exercise. Reading in context is my favorite bite. It's easy to do in the Psalms because all you have to do is read the whole Psalm. You don't have to read multiple chapters or a whole letter or anything like that because they all stand alone. So I now because I really unpack Psalm 47 in episode 144, um, I'm going to go about it a little bit differently. But um, so let's jump in. I want to read the first couple of verses just to give us some reference. Come, everyone, clap your hands. Shout to God with joyful praise. For the Lord Most High is awesome. He is the great King of all the earth. He subdues the nations before us, putting our enemies beneath our feet. He chose the promised land as our inheritance, the proud possession of Jacob's descendants, whom he loves. Now, verse 1 reminds us of what our response should be when we consider the king of the world. We're, we're to clap and rejoice and shout with joy, and we're to do it together. We have corporate worship of this mighty king. And then verse 2, our inspiration verse, reminds us he is most high. He is awesome. He is the great king of all the earth. If all we did was stop there and daily the rest of this week proclaim how mighty and awesome God is and just place him in the position in our minds where he truly is as king over everything, that alone might give us the perspective that we need. Now, verse 3 says he subdues nations, and it also says he puts enemies under our feet. And then verse 4 says this king of the world chose the promised land as the proud possession of Jacob's descendants. So last week, I talked about reading the Bible to see what it says, not always necessarily only for application. And I want it to change the way I think. I want it to change the way I think about the king of the world that I serve. Now, I am not in the military or the government, so subduing of nations may not have any significance in my daily problems. It's not one of those verses I'm going to put on a sticky note on my mirror necessarily or on a bumper sticker, but it is a revelation of who God is. You know, I sometimes get burdened with the enormity of our businesses. My husband and I own a um, couple businesses. He bears the brunt of the burden. My name's on it, but he's the one that runs them, but um it's just a business or two, not a whole nation. And I guess what I'm trying to say is spend a minute to think about how big this makes God. This idea that he subdues nations. He is all powerful. And although I'm not a descendant of Jacob by birth, I'm a spiritual descendant, of course. And and the God who set a plan in motion over hundreds of years prior to giving them the promised land, who, who cut covenant with Abraham himself. His plan was to give the Hebrew people the promised land, and it was a good land, and it was a good plan. And he planned all of that because he loved them, and he loved them before they were even born. And when you consider the original promise, it was made to Abraham, and then you read all of Genesis to see what happened in between that promise, and all of the, the books that come after it, all of it, it's coming to pa- it comes to pass in the book of Joshua. That's a long-term plan. And when, when we read this idea of God, you know, bringing people into the promised land, we get all warm and fuzzy, and we think about the good plan that God has for our own lives, and we ask him what our own promised lands are, uh, forgetting that it may not even happen in our own generation. You see, because God's plans are so huge, so long-term, so eternal-minded, I'm not trying to say that God doesn't have plans for you or care about you and your individual needs right now. He absolutely does. I'm just saying, when you fix your eyes on the king of the world, you see it as a gift that he would even consider using you in his plan or consider meeting you where you are. Uh, He does. He meets you where you are. He loves you. But it's a gift. Uh, 
I have to admit, you know, when I read scripture, I'm constantly breaking the rules that I laid out last week. I'm constantly looking at scripture through a selfish lens. How can I apply this to my life? What does this say to me? How can I unpack this for my listeners? Can I come up with some tweetable revelation that will stick in the minds of my listeners? So I know that you're going through this too because I'm going through it. You know, can I confess that I find myself getting bored sometimes or skimming until I find something uh, quote unquote good to latch on to? Lord, I repent of that right now. This should not be so. My prayer lately has been, Lord, show me more of you. I want to get to know you. I want to treasure your words and your way of thinking over my own, over what it could benefit me, over, uh, I want want to treasure your words and your way of thinking over the blogs and the books and the talking heads of our day. I want to fade away. When did I forget that you are the king of the world? Let's keep reading in verse 5. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises to our King. Sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth. Sing praises with a psalm. God reigns over the nations. God sits on his holy throne. The princes of the peoples gather as the people of the God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong to God. He is highly exalted. Now verse 5, it talks about him ascending with a mighty shout and trumpets blaring. And this is in reference to the ark of the Lord being brought up. If you read that in 2 Samuel 6.15, you see it says, So David and all the house of Israel were bringing up the ark of the Lord with shouting and the sound of the trumpet. And verse 8 reminds us, God reigns above the nations. He is sitting on his holy throne. I, I can't read that verse the same after pondering God's throne last week when we talked about the verses in Ezekiel and Revelation as inspired by the song Revelation song. It's just amazing. So my list, it could be longer, but my list says he is most high, mighty, awesome, and the king over all the earth. He subdues nations. He puts enemies under our feet. He chose the promised land as a long-term inheritance for those he loves. He ascended with a mighty shout and trumpets blaring. He reigns above the nations, sitting on his holy and magnificent throne. Your list might be different. Perhaps you can rewrite these ideas like a lyricist does. You know, when our lyrics say, the whisper of your voice tames the seas, I think, I wish I could write like that because I tend to think in the more concrete verse quoting way of even the winds and waves obey him. So I challenged myself. I challenged myself to write a list from memory. What do I know about God? Come up with six or seven things that I could write down and then Um, repeat to myself this week. So I wrote down, you cause walls to crumble. You divide the sea. Your promises are many and dependable. You laid the foundation of the earth. You cause the rain to fall on barren land in a desert where no one lives. You rescue those who seem hopelessly lost. So that's just a few things I wrote down. Of course, the list could go on and on, but I gave myself another challenge, you know, because since I I write this podcast from scripture each and every week, if I just took the last seven episodes, what characteristics of God did we talk about on the podcast that I could identify or I could put into a list? And so um, episode 152, just last week, inspired by Revelation song and, and the reading that we read in Ezekiel and Revelation, I learned that God reigns from his throne and he deserves all praise. The week before, episode 151, inspired by battles by the afters and, and where we read in Second Chronicles 20, I learned that vast armies are no match for God. In episode 150, inspired by Tim Tim and song, Everywhere I Go, and and what we read in John 5, I learned that God is always working. In episode 149, inspired by Christy Knuckles' song, Amaryllis, and Matthew chapter 1, just reading through the genealogy, I discovered that God sent the light of life through fragile people. Episode 158, inspired by Meredith Andrews' song, He Has Come For Us, and 
what we read in Luke chapter 1, we see that God came down to us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. In episode 147, inspired by Lauren Daigle's version of O Come All Ye Faithful and and just reading in Luke and Matthew, the Christmas story, we beheld the details of the significance of Christ coming to earth as a baby. In episode 146, inspired by We Are Messenger's song, God With Us, and Isaiah and Matthew chapter 1, I see that God created everything through Christ and then sent him to be with us. God reigns from his throne and he deserves all praise. Vast armies are no match for God. God is always working. God sent the light of life through fragile people. God came down to give us light and guide our feet into the way of peace. We can behold him. And God created everything through Christ and then sent him to be with us. I think you can see we can go on and on. And I agree with John, all the volumes of all the writing in all the world, in all of history, cannot contain the greatness of God. And so when I'm, I'm feeling sorry for myself and wondering where God is in my situation, or I I just need to take him out of the small box I've put him in and clap my hands with joy and shouts, giving him the praise he is due because I have somehow forgotten that he is mighty, awesome, alive and well, and sitting on his throne, and he truly is the king of the world. So what's next? Head back over to Psalm 47 or go there for the first time if you didn't take the challenge before. Spend some time considering the greatness of the king of the world. Follow my lead and make a list of the characteristics of God while you're there. And if you want a different list or go to a different place or you need some different inspiration to make a list on your own, I recommend starting in Job chapter 38. This is God's response to Job and his friends. And he's just listing out so many of his own qualities and characteristics. You could, um, you will find many uh, to make a list there. Um, from your own personal study, I hope that you're in God's word and, and whether you're inspired by this podcast to go where we go every week or you're doing your own thing and in God's word, um, take your eyes off of application this week and just continue to focus on the glory of God. And from wherever you're reading, write your lists and then revisit them daily. Use those lists to inspire your holy moments with the Lord as you verbally recount back to him his greatness. And then while you're in God's word this week, let me know how you're doing. You can email me directly, michelle at michellekneezat.com. You can hop on Twitter at Michelle Nizat or Facebook. Michelle L. Nizat is my public page. Let's talk about what you're learning. Now, before I tell you what song will be featured next week, I want to shout out to Karen from Florida, Bill from California, LaToya from somewhere in the U.S., Jane from Washington, and Alexis from Texas. These are my newest subscribers to my website. Welcome. Now, the benefit of subscribing is that I email you once a week, and in that email, you'll get a weekly memory verse resource to display on your smartphone, your tablet, your desktop. You can even print it out. You will get an email recap of the week's episode and every once in a while I will create extra resources for the podcast you'll get those uh, instantly you won't have to subscribe to those separately and all of that is just my way to say thank you for listening so head over to michellekneezat.com to subscribe today Now, don't miss an episode of my podcast. You can subscribe directly in iTunes. And if you have an Android device, um, Stitcher Radio is where you can subscribe to my podcast. And while you're in iTunes, would you leave me a written review and a star rating? It really encourages me, of course. But more than that, it helps me stay visible to new listeners. And as always, if you take the time to review my podcast, I will take the time to personally thank you right here on the podcast. Well, that's it for this episode of More Than a Song. Next week, I will use the song No Longer Slaves by I Am They. If you liked this episode, would you mind sharing it with others? I've made it really easy. With one click, you can share via Facebook, Twitter, or email. Just head over to michellekneezat.com forward slash 153. And while you're there, I'd love to hear from you. Click on comment to join the conversation. 
Until next time, take time to meditate on God's Word and consider His ways.